screen because we'll work from my screen for the table. Okay. So I'm not going to start by explaining anything. We're just going to go straight into the questions and start answering the question. And then I will explain concepts and things as we go along so that we are all on the same page. So I have about in this session about 20 questions and I'm hoping we can do all of them. Um, so that it gives you an opportunity to practice hypothesis testing based on the theory that we have learned on hypothesis testing for the um, for the mean when the population standard deviation is known and hypothesis testing for the mean when the population standard deviation is unknown and hypothesis testing for the proportions. Um, and remember also when you answer question on hypothesis testing, remember all those six steps of hypothesis. We're going to rely on those steps when we do the questions and also when we get to the p-value, um, I, I need to also, um, I think I included more questions that relates to the p-value, how we find the p-value as well, so that you get a practice in terms of remembering that when you find the p-value, what you need to be doing with that. Okay, so kick off some couple of questions. We will do them together. Some of them, I will let you do them alone as well. <clears throat> Okay, here's the first question. For testing the null hypothesis that the proportion is one over four or one quarter against the alternative, which says the proportion is less than one over four. It is given that the sample proportion is three over 11 and n is 400 calculate the test statistics so yeah it's easy and straightforward all they want you to do is to calculate the test statistic since they have given us their proportions population proportion and sample proportion so it means our z stat is sample proportion minus population proportion divided by the square root of your population proportion times one minus population proportion divided by n. I just want to bring my screen back. So given the info, oh, sorry. Given the information, we just need to substitute our population our sample proportion is 3 over 11 minus our population proportion it's 1 over 4 divided by the square root of 1 over 4 times 1 minus 1 over 4 divided by our n is 400. Okay. I could have just converted my 3 over 11 and, my, and 1 over 4 to decimals as well. So you can do that and substitute the decimals. Do calculate. If I convert 3 divided by 11, it's 0 0.272727. So I'm going to use my calculator on this one because it's easy. I do the fraction and then I will add my fraction again as well. 
and say 3 over 11 minus action 1 over 4 go down at the square root of a fraction and this way it gets tricky okay a fraction which is one over four and use my arrow open bracket one minus one over four i just complicated my life but you don't have to complicate it this way then go down and put the 400 so you just need to know how to use your calculator and what do you get from your side i will tell you what i get i got one 1.049 Seven. One point zero four nine seven. That's it. And that's the same as what you have. So that if we round it to two, two decimal, because our answer is two decimal, then the answer is option two. Happiness. Let's see if this was a, if this was going to be a more complicated question. Sorry, if you just go back. You, this is a one. This would be a one-tail test. This is a one-tail test because yes. there's no uh, not equal to sign in it. Yes. So okay. we always look at the alternative okay. state. See, those are the kind of things that will stick in my head. I, I would at least remember that. Then I it makes it easy to know which direction to go. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next question. Calculate the p value. of the test of the following hypothesis given that the sample proportion p equals 0 0.63 n equals 100 and the calculated test statistic is z is equals to 0 0.05 the null hypothesis and alternative are stated and they state this because they want to help us um, with finding the p value. So the null hypothesis is equal to 0, 0,60, and the alternative says it's greater than 0, 0,60. Since we, can't, we need to find the p value, and we need to remember the following remember that the table, the cumulative standardized probability table, contains the probability of z less than a if we need to find the probability of z greater than a you remember we say one minus the probability of the value we find on the table remember that ne? remember that now i want to bring to your attention i think we did this previously we need to remember the following for a p value if we need to find the p value and number one if our z state is negative and our null hypothesis the sign says greater than then p value will be equals to the value you find on the table. That's as straightforward as that. If your Z value is negative, if it's negative and you use your Z state to go find the P value, which is the probability on the table, and the sign says it's greater than the value you find on the table, it is that value that you are looking for. If your Z value is positive, 
and your alternative, it says greater than, then your p value will be equals to one minus the table value, the value you will find on the table. That you need to always remember. Always, always. You need to remember that if Z is negative, and you need to find the probability the greater than a one tail upper tail, P value will be the value you find on the table. If it is positive and it, the alternative sign says greater than, then you're going to find the value by saying one minus the value you find on the table. Okay. Knowing that, knowing what we are given, needing to find the p-value, and we told that it is greater than, find the p-value. So it means we need to go to the table. We need to go and locate this value. So let's go to the z table. Z table, we need to find 0, 0,05. So we go here, we do find 0, 0,05. We also need to find, oh, not 0, this is not the one. No, that's not the one. We're looking for 0, 0,0. So 0, 0,0 at the top, we're looking for 5, which is that. So the answer is this, which is 0, 0,5199. So in order for us to find the p value, we need to say 1 minus 0, 0,5199. And our p value is? 0, 0,4801. Option one. And that will be option one. Miss Liz? Yes? <laughs> you know, the other thing that puzzles me is identifying tables. I don't want to lie. How do we know which one, like when you get a question like this, which table do you go for? So, um, hmm. how do I put this? So for this question, for proportion, whether you're doing confidence interval or you're doing hypothesis testing, anyway where you see it says proportions, you know that you're going to use Z table. And that will be, remember always, that the Z table is what we call the normal table. Let, let's just call it that, the normal table, which will be the cumulative standardized normal distribution table. So, which is this? Which is table E2? Thank you. This is, so somewhere on the, on the page or the booklet or the past exam paper that we are using or anywhere where you have the table, Maybe you need to say this is my Z table. Or you need to name it that such and say this is my Z table. But all the other tables and also there is a Z on yeah. there on there as well, just and to true. show you what table it yeah. is. If you look at the T table, you will have a T, a T, and it will show you which table it is, so you don't get confused. Um Next, after this, we're going to introduce another table. So that is why I said um, okay. it's very complex. So I'm using a question paper and I see the Z that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And then the other one says T distribution. Okay. No, yes. no. Then thank you. Thank you. So when we introduce the next study unit, we're going to use the chi square table. 
and that will be the the only tables except the binomial and the poison so because they are labeled like that binomial and then the other one is poison so you just need to know them and and look at the key things on the table to know which table we're referring to right thank you so that is the p value so let's go to the next question i want you to get uh, look through this question and then we will do it together uh, from option one up until option five we'll do that together but i want you to look at it alone and do it alone and see if you can get the answer i will give you five minutes just to help you when they ask you for the test statistic you know that we the population standard deviation is known i'll just give you the formula this will be the last time i'm doing it next time you will have to do it yourself so yeah because of the sign here it's greater than therefore our critical value we just use alpha so you're just going to find your critical value by using alpha so your five minutes has already started
Okay, are we done? I see some responses. Or am I? Remember, we're looking for the incorrect answer. Eh? Are we done? Two more minutes, please. Okay. Lizzie, that sounds like comfort food. <laughs> That's peanuts. It's cashew nuts, actually. Are we done? Uh, let's continue. Got stuck somewhere. <laughs> okay. So, how did you substitute your X bar? They are all given, highlight, um, indicated, so it should be easy to substitute into the formula. So it's 405 minus. 400 divided by 100 divided by square root of 1000. And the answer you got is? 1.58. 1.58, which is option number one. Yeah. Which that this is correct because it's 1.58. Now, the next question says we need to find the p value. So, since the p value, looking at this, it is greater than, so it means we need to say 1 minus the value we find on the table. Remember that. Remember? 
this information. If it's positive and it's greater than one minus the value we find on the table. And since this is positive, so you go to the table, you look for 1.5. Eight, which is nine four two nine. So you will say one minus zero point nine four two nine. And what do you get? Point zero five seven one. We get point zero five seven one, which is the same as the answer on the options, which is not our incorrect one. Number three, the critical value is zero comma zero five. We also doing a one tail, so it means we're going to find the critical value by using Z alpha, and therefore Z of 0, 0,05. If we go to the Z table, we need to look inside the table. So it means we're going to go to the negative side because this side is the bigger number. We're looking for 0, 0,05. So not zero comma, not that. Let me reduce the table a little bit. Go here, zero comma zero two, zero three, zero four, zero five. So remember, these are the two. If we go up or go down, it's five different. So if I go up and I go here, and I will notice that is that one that uses one comma four five. One comma six four five. So it means our critical value for a one tail. Critical value for one tail is one comma six four five. So what I what, um closer to the time, not now, uh, later on, you can also draw yourself a table. You already have the the Z alpha divided by two. Uh, okay, maybe we need to do this. Uh, you will have your one minus alpha, which is your confidence level where we know that this is 0, 0,95, our alpha is 0, 0,05, therefore our alpha over 2 will be 1,96. You can also draw for yourself, only for the Z table, this is doable, not for the T table, for the Z table only. So for Z alpha, we now know that it's 1,645. And you can do for the other ones as well and then have this table as a reference table somewhere where you can always come back and refer to it, especially when you do the Z table, so that you don't always go to the normal distribution table to go find the critical value. You can just use your table to find the critical values. It will be a lifesaver if you can do it that way. Okay, so that is just another useful information you can use or not use. It's up to you. So then this is incorrect. Number four and number five, we can do it at one go because number four says the null hypothesis is not rejected. Then number five is the decision of that. It says there is not enough evidence to reject because we're not rejecting the null hypothesis to reject the null hypothesis at alpha e level of significance of five percent so in order to do this we can either use the the p value that we have and the alpha so if we use the p value and alpha the rules say if i put the rule here it says if the p value 
is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So now let's test that rule. What is our p value? Our p value is 0, 0,0571. And what is our alpha? Our alpha is 0, 0,05. Therefore, our p value is greater than. And when it's greater than, we do not reject the null hypothesis because there is not enough evidence to reject it. So that is correct. That is correct because step number four says we do not reject. That's the correct answer. And uh, step number five is just the decision that we're making that we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. And that's how you should have answered it. There is a question that looks exactly like this, so I will expect you to do it on your own and get it right. Okay. For example. Lizzie, can you just go one back quickly, please? I said, Leaf. Sorry. Okay, thanks. And I saw what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. For a sample of 35 items from a population for which the population standard deviation, which is given, is 20.5, the sample mean is 458. At 5% level of significance, the tutor wants to test that the mean of 450 against the alternative which says the mean is not equals to 450. We are given the sample, we are given the population standard deviation, we are given the sample mean, we are told what alpha is, and we just need to answer the question and find the incorrect statement. We're given the alternative hypothesis which tells us this is a two-sided test, so it means if we're going to find the critical value, we're going to find by using alpha divided by two. When we make decisions, there are two regions of rejection. If we're going to find the p-value, we're going, I will explain it later on. Question or statement number one. Is that true or false? True. Is this test, a two, it is a two-tailed test, so it's true. Find the critical value. Z alpha divided by 2, which is Z of 0, 0,05 divided by 2. By now, you should know what that critical value is. Uh, that is 1.96. 0, 0,02. Zero two five zero. If we go to the table, that is the critical value we're looking for. That's not the one. This is the one. which is 1,96. And if you would have done that table, you would have w stopped, wasted your time from doing all this calculation and going to the table and then identified it from your summary table. Lizzie, just show you, uh, excuse, just show it on your table again. For a moment, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting what you got there. Oh. But, but that's, that's minus. On, on, on negative. Yeah, that's a minus. Remember when we find the critical value, we always just ignore the sign. We just ignore the sign. Okay. We will put the sign when we do the regions of rejection. We will say this is the negative side and this is the positive side. 
And if it's only a one tail table, if it's a one tail side, we only use the one side. So always when you look at critical values, especially when we deal with two tail, um, regardless of whether it's a negative or positive, we just use, we ignore the sign. Only if they are deliberate and they tell you that it's a one tail test, then you will need to put the sign. Because if, if this, let's say, if the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis was greater than for this tail test, this would have been 1 comma 96. If it's less than, it's minus 1 comma 96, only for the less than. For greater than, it will be that. If it's for equal, we can just ignore the sign because it's a plus or minus. So you must always remember that as well. So those are the things that you need to remember. For a two-tail test, we can ignore the side in front because we know that it's both sides, it's negative and positive. On a one tail, if it's less than, it will be minus 196. If it's greater than, it will be 196, positive 196. So on this one, it is a two tail test, so we can just leave it as 1,96. Okay, step number three, or oh, statement number three, calculate the test statistic. So now you need to go and calculate the test statistic. Z stat is equals to the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Substitute the values. Our mean is 48, 458, 458, minus our population is 450, divided by the standard error, sample uh, population standard deviation, 20.5, divided by the square root of our n is 35. Calculate and let me know what you get. It's 2.31. So, 4858 minus 450 divide by another fraction, uh, 20.5 divide by the square root of. 35, which is 2.31, which is the same as what we have. Number four, it says find the p value. So we know that our test statistic is positive. Now, when we find the p-value for a two-tail test, so finding the p-value for a two-tail test, we need to remember the following. If our z is negative, if our z is negative, then we're going to say two times the table value, and that will give us the p-value. If z is positive, then we're going to say two times one minus the table value, and that will give us the p-value. We have 
a positive value and we are doing a two tail. So we're going to go to the positive side table. Look for 2.3. What did we get? 2.31. Going to find 2.31. Which is zero point nine eight nine six. So, yeah, we're going to say this should be because it's a two tail, so there are two sides, it's two times one minus zero comma nine eight nine six. And that should give you 2 times 0 0.0208. You, you, you forgot your zero, ne? Yeah. Zero point oh two oh eight. Oh, come on. which is incorrect. So our incorrect answer will be option four. Just to check also option five, H not is rejected at 5% level of significance. We know what the rule say. The rule says if the P value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. So let's test that. Our p-value, we found it, it was 0, 0,0208. Our alpha, it's 0, 0,05. Is this less than that? Yes, it is. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. We can use that or we can use the critical value and the test statistic. Or we can use the critical value and the test statistic because it's a two tail. We have two regions of rejections. One is minus 1,96 and one is 1,96. Our test statistic is 2.31 it falls somewhere there in the rejection area so we reject the null hypothesis so whichever one you use you yes, can let's. make that same decision yes can i ask but didn't we we divide the the alpha with two aren't we going to use that one use which one the critical value but the critical value we did find it it was 1.6 um, i mean in terms of the alpha when we have to test the the, the p value when we when we do the p value no yeah the, since it's remember, a two chain are we using the original value remember the decision says p value and alpha not alpha over two we compare oh, okay. the p value to alpha Ne? Yes, 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 thank you. Consider a one sided upper tail. So one sided upper tail, which means it's greater than so I want to go back to my red pen. The hype um what consider a one sided upper tail hypothesis test with one percent 
level of significance, which is our alpha of 0 0.05, um, 0 0.01. And 20 degrees of freedom, which this is our DF, our degrees of freedom. If the population standard deviation is unknown, and when the population standard deviation is unknown, we use T. What is the critical value? So since we're doing an upper tail, are we doing T alpha divided by 2 or T alpha? Which one? T alpha. We're doing T alpha. So if we're doing T alpha and the degrees of freedom, our T, they told us our alpha is 0 0.01 and our degrees of freedom is 20. So go find the critical value on the T table. 0 0.01 at the top. So you will go find 0 0.01 at the top and then go find the degrees of freedom on the side. You need to go find 20. So let's go to the T table. T. Zero comma zero one at the top. Go look for zero comma zero one. So we're looking for T zero comma zero one and twenty. Did you find it? It's 2.528. 0, 0, 0,01 and 20, which is 2.2528. Let's go. Our answer is in the two decimals, so it will be. 2. Oh, come on. So our answer will be option number E. Uh, Lizzie, can you please just go back to your table again and just zoom out a little? Um, I think I have the I am having either the wrong table. Just a little, okay, yeah, just like that. Uh, critical values, yeah, you see. It's like my other no. is saying which table to use. Some tables, they are called T distribution. And when you look at the table, it should, it should have a T somewhere there. Or they should have a T somewhere on there to tell you that it's a T table. Uh, you found it? Hold on, I'm checking. I think I did. Yeah, I was on the wrong table. Two point. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Hey. Donkey. Okay. Okay, so next, I want you to try this one on your own. The most important thing here is your, not your, your null hypothesis, is your alternative hypothesis and the other information given. So you need to go calculate your Z and then use the Z to go find the value on the table.
remember that it's greater than, and I told you that we will have a question similar to that. You have to do it on your own. Let me remind you just quickly going back. Let me remind you if the p value is negative, the value you find on the table will be if the sorry, if the z value is negative, the value you find on the table will be your p value. If your z value is positive, then you say one minus the value you find on the table. You must write this somewhere. Uh, this for p value, including also this for the two sided so that you always, always remember that. Okay. I'm going to grab water. <clears throat> Are we winning? Are we done? I think the silence means we're still trying. <laughs> you want me to show you the table? But I will need to know whether are you going to the positive or the negative side of the table. For those who already calculated the Z. So let's let's calculate Z and then we can open the table and help those 
we don't have a table. So what is our our mean? The sample size n is hundred. The mean and the standard deviation. Three point four. And I don't know why they would have also asked you to calculate this, the p value for is for this because uh, if this is the sample standard deviation, we cannot calculate the p value. But anyway, let's see. Um, we have Lizzie. Yes. A small little favor. I, I know you're going to do the whole formula, but on. So this is where I usually get stuck with some of these stuff. They throw a lot of values in there. I sometimes struggle to know which one it is. Uh, for me, every, <laughs> everything you probably need to use, but I know like your X bar, what is it, 3,400. Mm -hmm. uh, so is, yeah, they say the mean and the standard deviation are found to be 3,400 and 11,000 respectively. So because they said mean end, so then this is the mean, that is the standard deviation. Uh, so the standard deviation will be 100 divided by n. n is 100, square root of 100. What did Yes. Isn't it supposed to be 33,000 minus 34,000? No. The sample mean, this is your sample mean. This is your standard sample standard deviation. That's why I was saying this question, probably they forgot to say here yeah, with the population standard deviation of this because we cannot find the P value for a T test. Remember your population mean is always given in the null hypothesis and it was given as a statement from the researcher, the claim. So our sample mean is 3, 4. Because it says to find whether the Krugers drop are exceeding the limit, a sample of 100 residents is selected and the mean and the standard deviation of is there. So I'm saying, yeah, they forgot to say population standard deviation. In order for us to find the p-value, we need the population standard deviation, not the sample standard deviation. Because when we find, when we have the sample standard deviation, we use t. And with t, we cannot find the p-value it's not easy we can find it but it's not easy to do it um, to calculate it <clears throat> it's a very complex calculation so what did you get here so it means you guys you didn't calculate it's zero, this it's zero, zero, zero point nine oh nine oh nine one what 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 wait wait three four z what am i doing three four zero zero minus three thousand no minus three three Zero, 3, zero. 3, not 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3,300. We can go fix that. 3,300 divided by uh, 1,000 divided by the square root of 100, which equals 0 0.90. So we can round it off to two decimal. And we'll have 0, 0,91. So now our answer is positive. 
we're looking for the greater than, so it means our p value will be equals to one minus the value we find on the table. So one minus the value we're going to find on the table, we need to go find z of 0, 0,91. So we need to go to the z table and go find 0, 0,9 and one, which that is 0, 0,8186. 0, 0,8186. And that should be 0 0.1814. 0, 0,1814, which is option two. I want you to do this. I'm not going to do it for you, this one. You will have to do it yourself. I'm not going to give you the answer, but I will tell you if it's correct or not correct. So I'm also going to give you a hint on how to attack this question. Because this question, if you look at the option, automatically you can see that they are only asking you to do a conclusion. Make a decision and conclude. Now you need to read the question to see what you are given and what you will need to make this conclusion because there are two things that you can do to make a decision. We can use the critical value. We can use the critical value and the test statistic to make it to make a decision by do, by using this. If it's a one tail or a two tail, we make those decisions. Or if, if the question, what am I doing now? So this is in case if it's Z or it's T, this will apply. You will need to use the critical value so for t alpha so for if it's z you whether you're using z alpha or t t alpha or you're using z alpha divided by two or t alpha divided by two depending on the statement if you are using the p value and alpha or oh, let's use the actual alpha or you can use your p-value or an alpha to make a decision and this is only applicable for z so based on the information given there are we going to use the critical value and the test statistic or the p-value to make a decision let's read the statement a various literacy group recommend a reading of 135 words per minute that's what the researcher is stating so 135 is our null hypothesis. So because it says is equal, then it means it should be a two-sided thing. A teacher is convinced that the average reading for her class is different for the recommended reading speed. In a sample of 35, so we are given our N sample, the average reading, which is our mean X bar, is 141. With the standard deviation, so now they also say the sample has the mean and the standard deviation, therefore this is S of 28. You are required to test the teacher's hypothesis 
that the uh, class reading speed is different because also of a different means it's equal for the recommended reading speed at 5%. They gave us our alpha 5% level of significance. Choose the incorrect statement below. So since we know that population standard deviation is not given. So sigma is unknown in this instance. Is un unknown. Therefore, we're going to use t test. Therefore, it means we're going to rely on t, not z. So we're going to use t critic. We're going to find t critical value, and because it says different, therefore it means we're going to have two regions of rejection. So what you need to do so that goes as well what you need to do is two things you will need to go find the critical value t alpha divided by two you will need to go find t alpha divided by two which they gave you your alpha is 0 0.05 so you will need to go find t alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom sorry i forgot the degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom and find that critical value. Number two, you need to go find Z equals. You need to go test, uh, calculate your test statistic. Z equals the mean divide by S divide by the square root of N. You need to go substitute the value and calculate this. So find those two, make a decision, and then we will talk. You have five minutes, 10 minutes. Let me give you 10 minutes. So we will meet again at half past. But if you got an answer, let us know that you are done. Remember, you can ask any question if you are stuck and you need help.
Are you winning? Almost there. Are we done? Hello, are we done? You still need more time? Because you still have three more minutes. Still trying. One minute.
Okay, are we done? Ten minutes gone. Go for it, Lizzie, show us. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything. You're going to give me the information. How do we find the critical value? By using our level of significance of 0, 0,05 divided by 2 on the T table with the degrees of freedom n minus 1, which is 34. So then you went and you used 0, 0,025 and your degrees of freedom of 34. Yes. So we we're going to go to the table, T table. Let me get a little bit bigger or smaller. Let's make it like that. So our 34 and 0, 0,05, which means it's this row, this column and this row. And you found 2, 0, 0,0322. Yes. So therefore our, since this is a 2 tail, plus or minus, 2, 0, I forgot the numbers now. Three zero two two. So it means our region of rejections, those two, two comma zero three. I'm just only going to keep the two decimals. It will be minus and positive two comma zero three for that one. So those are our region of rejections. So now, calculating the z-stat, your mean was 141 minus your standard deviation, oh sorry, your population mean was 135 divided by your standard deviation, 28. 28. 28. Divide by square root of 35. And what did you get? 1.27. Happy? Yes. So now let's make a decision. Where does 1.27 If this is zero in the middle, where does it fall? It falls somewhere in the white shaded area. Therefore, it falls in the do not reject area. So coming to before we make our decision, we can look at the decision because the decisions are the first sentences, like the first three words that appear or four weights that appear here. So the first one is do not reject. So that is correct. This one says reject. So that won't be correct. This one says there is no enough evidence. We do have enough. That's not correct. We can make decision. There we made a decision. D says we reject the null hypothesis and conclude. We do not reject. So we left with two statements. The last statement says we need to make a conclusion. And when we make a conclusion, we must base it on the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis said there is a difference. So it means if we are we if we are not rejecting, so therefore the alternative will not have been true. So 
the first one says we we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the average is significantly different but we said it's not it's the, the there is no difference there so we say we're not rejecting so it means this statement will not be the right statement but this statement because it says there is a different there is not a difference so this is not significantly different will be the right one to use so your answer will be option number e so you would go back to, you would go back to this teacher and tell them you, what you're saying is not true yeah yeah no because we're not rejecting if we were rejecting it there would have been sufficient if information to say there is they are different do you understand we're not rejecting the null hypothesis that says the class reading is different from the recommended speed okay so it means that they are not different do you understand yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I understand. It's a little bit I, tricky that way because the, the statement says her class reading is different from, but we're not rejecting that. So therefore, it's not different. Yeah, so, so that's, that's, that's actually what I, that's what I was, that's actually what I meant. From a statistical point of view, we do not reject the null hypothesis. That, yes. That's good, based on the, the, the data we have. But then you would say to her, that the average reading speed is not different. That yes. saying to her that she's wrong. That's just how my mind is thinking at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, another question. Consider the statements you given all the information. Number one, is this a two tail test? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is a two tail test. Can't find the critical value. We're using a two tail test. Alpha is 0, 0.05. Is this statement correct? Yes. The statement is correct because by now you should know that for alpha divided by two, which is 0, 0.025, the critical value is 1,96. Calculate the test statistic. Substitute the value and calculate the test statistic. What is your mean? Your mean is 53.5 minus your population mean is in the hypothesis testing, which is 50. Divide by your standard deviation is 10. Divide by the square root of 64. Calculate. 2.8 is correct. 2.8 will be correct. Now, it's a two tail. The value is the p value. We need to find the p value. It will be two times one minus the value you find on the table. So go into the table 2.8. We need to go to the Z table and go look for 9974, 0 0.9974, which is 2 times 1 minus 0 0.9974. Let's see again if I got it right. Yes, I did. Oh, 
what is the p-value? So I'm getting 0 0.0052. 0 0.0052. 52, therefore this is incorrect. If we use the p-value and alpha of 0 0.05, our p-value is 0 0.0052 and our alpha is 0 0.05. Is this more than that? So no, it is less than that. So our p-value of 0 0.05 is less than alpha, therefore we reject the null hypothesis, which means the statement is correct as well. Find the p-value. You first need to calculate your z state and use your z state to go find your p-value. Your sample mean is 190 minus your population mean is 200 divided by your standard deviation is 50 divided by square root of your n is 9. Calculate, then go find the probability on the table. Remember the sign? We know that the table contains less less than value, which are also called your p-values. What is your Z-state? What did you get? I got negative 0 0.6. Negative 0 0.60. Then take that negative 0 0.60, go to the table, look for negative 0 0.60. That is your, your, that is your p-value which is 0 0.273. Yes, well, at what point do we ignore the, the, the signs? What do you mean at what point do we ignore the sign? We never ignore the sign. I saw somewhere where you mentioned that we don't uh, we ignore the sign. I don't know which one was that. Oh, when we were talking about the critical value. Ah, okay. Actually, yeah, I <laughs> the society is gonna complain <laughs> because if you don't have, if you didn't check with the sign, if it's zero point six zero, the answer would be number two. But yeah, always remember that when we we do hypothesis testing, we always use the smaller side area. So now. If you get a probability of 0 0.7530, let's say, it will not be right because it says you're looking for the bigger site, you're looking for the bigger portion. Remember, underneath the curve, the area underneath the curve, which is the sum of your probability, should be equal to 1. So if it's a one sided test, let's say it's a one sided test. So if it's a one-sided test, it will look like this. So we only, if it's, uh, let's use the less than site, 
the less than site. We're looking for this portion. We're going to look for only this site. Everything in the bigger site. So everything in this bigger site for the less than will be do not reject. Everything that is on this site will be reject. So if your answer is this, therefore it represents this site, which is not correct. You cannot make a decision based on the bigger site. You need to minus one so that you get this portion to make your decision. So you always, always remember that. If you go to the, if your answer is going to be positive, it gives you the bigger area. Let's go here. Yeah? You can see that it takes the bigger area. We're looking for this smaller portion. Or if you lose, if you use the negative side, you can see we're looking for this smaller portion. The negative side is easier because it contains the smaller area. So any value you get, the Z value you get, and it's positive, you're going to subtract it from one so that you can get the smaller portion. So remember that, to remember always. So this is... The tips are helpful, thank you. Yes, so that should always be at the back of your mind. Okay. Professor of Statistics refuses to claim that the average student sp spends three hours study for the exam. Which of the following hypothesis is used to test this claim? One, two, three, four, or five? Three. One, two, three, or five? I think it's two. It is two is correct because the null hypothesis will say equal and the alternative will say it is not equal because they, it just says they, they it claims that they spent three hours, not more than, not less than. So just exactly. So it will be a two tail and it will be not equal so this won't be even correct three you can look at it they have swapped in your null hypothesis we always state the equal side the equality and so in your null hypothesis there should never be an equal sign yes sorry lizzie so the not equals will always be the one to the to the very right Yes, it should. I'm just thinking of yeah, yeah, thinking of process of elimination. It just makes our makes our chances. It makes it easier. Yeah. Lizzie, just go back again for me, there, please. Donkey. Okay. State your null and alternative hypothesis. One, two, three, or four. Which one? 
One, two, three, four, or five. Which one of it? I think it's four. I think it's two. I'm, I'm also going to go for four. I will say you why four as well, because it's uh, the it's less than yes. yeah, the union doesn't believe it's uh, it's less than thirty thousand. Yes. Uh, remember the claim here yeah, is not only what the statement is saying the way they say the average is thirty thousand, but they also say because the mean annual income of blue collar workers in the country is less than and since this is the study about across the country is not about that company alone so we need to also take that into consideration and that says it, the uh, mean income is less than so therefore it changes everything it means the population mean is less than Remember, this is the mean of the company, not the not the country. The country is the population. So the mean um, the mean uh, value will be the mean income will be less than thirty. So if it's that, I I could just even ignore what on the null hypothesis and look at the alternative and i can see that all the alternatives won't be correct the only one that is correct is option four you can do that uh, other uh, you can start by by eliminating number one because it talks to the sample yeah that was that was what i gonna ask I, I i would assume in these hypothesis testings you do not have this do you write the sample like that no, this is incorrect of it's how it's complete. Okay. You will 